Okay, hi everybody. Uh, in this lesson, uh, we're gonna talk about a couple different things, but what I wanna talk about right now is pointer operations. And the reason why this is important, we've been using pointers for a while now and dealing with arrays and things, but now we just got this new arrow operator introduced with uh, structs, pointers to structs, and it can start to get a little bit confusing with everything and, and thinking about what the types mean. So I wouldn't just take a moment to review that and how we think about um, what are the different operations with relating to pointers, um, how do they change the types, and how do they relate to structs as well. Okay, so let's think about what ops we might be interested in. Um, so there's the ampersand op, that's the address of operator. There's the star operator. There's the index i operator. Um, then we also have, uh, this isn't exactly a pointer operator, but it's um, like when you say something dot a field for a struct. And then there's a related one, which is the arrow field. First of all, what's the type of something that we need in order to apply this operation. So for the address of operator, we can apply it to any type. And then what does that do uh, after we apply the address of operator? Well, that turns it from any type into a pointer to that type. So the address of operator goes from a T, where T is anything, into a T star. Okay, this is the dereference operator is next. What does that do? That goes from a pointer to something. And again, T, I'm just writing T for any type. So there's a pointer to anything, and it takes away that pointer from the type. So it becomes just uh, the original thing. So like the address of operator, what does that do visually? That draws an arrow to whatever we're pointing to. Whereas the uh, reference operator, uh, the dereference operator, the star, that follows um, the arrow, right? So this only applies to pointer types, meaning that there's some arrow going on, and when you dereference it, you follow the arrow in the, in the diagram. Okay, so moving on, what about this index of operator? Well, it's kind of related to the dereference operator, but with the index as well. So the type stuff is gonna be the same. And what this does is now two things. We follow the arrow, then jump uh, by i positions. And that's kind of what, the, uh, what this operator does, the index of operator. Okay, now getting into these struct-based things. So a field, that has to, if we apply the dot operator, the type beforehand, that has to be strum kind of a struct type. And then what does it give us is whatever the type is of S in the struct definition. Of course, what does that mean? It just means going into the struct. And finally, the arrow operator, what does the type have to be for that to apply? That has to be a pointer to a struct. So struct S star would be that pointer type. And the result is the same as before. It's the type of S dot field. I should have said that up here as well. And what does the arrow operator really do? Is it follows the arrow, um, then go into the struct. I'm mixing my uh, parts of speech here all over the place and I hope that you'll forgive me. And maybe that's a little bit abstract. So let's think about one concrete example here. So if I'm gonna make a, let's say I'll make a struct type. So I'll make a point struct. And now let's say I have an array of points in my program. Then what I wanna think about, let's think of a complicated operation. I wanna think about this operation. Um, array index three plus, address of array index three plus two arrow y. Okay. So what the heck is that thing, and how can we kind of decipher what's going on there? So the goal of what I wanna do right here is just to think about this whole expression. What does it mean, and uh, what would be the, like, the type of this, and what would this look like? So in order to answer that, we can 
faithfully follow along the rules of the type transformations, like what we just talked about, um, and apply them one by one and see what the type of the result should be. We can also think about this pictorially, which I think can be pretty useful. So in terms of pictures, what do we have going on here is we have main over here in the stack. And inside main, we have this array, which is a pointer to a struct PT. And it's actually a pointer in the he to a heap allocated array of a bunch of struct PTs. So each of these things in the array, and there's 10 of them, each of these has an X and a Y value. X and a Y value, X and a Y value. So each of these boxes in the array is a struct PT. And so now let's think about what happens here. First thing we have to know is what's the order of operations. So between square brackets and the address of operator, the square brackets operator has the highest precedence. So that's going to be as if there was parentheses right there. So um, array index three. We said that uh, what does array indexing mean is that we take the, I'm going to try to like follow the path along here, maybe in fuchsia. All right, let's see if this works. So we start here, uh, index three means we follow the arrow, then jump ahead by that many spots. So one, two, three. Next thing that happens is the ampersand operator. So the ampersand operator here. So that means we're going to draw a pointer to that. So now we have a pointer to this spot. Um, now we add two to that. What does it mean to add two to the pointer is we just offset that pointer. So now we have a pointer to this spot. And now what happens with that whole thing is it gets the arrow operator applied to it. So the arrow operator means we follow that pointer and then we go into the struct um, and so there will be a field Y in this struct. And so that's where we ultimately end up. So we ultimately end up this, this whole weird looking expression is the same as if we wrote, it's really just the fifth index in the array and the Y element. So array index five dot Y. It's a much more complicated way of writing array index five dot Y. But I just wanted to bring that up because it kind of uses all those operators that we just talked about. And by reasoning through one by one, step by step, we can take really a crazy looking, wild, useless expression like this, complicated, and decipher it slowly, applying the operations in the right order to find out what it actually means.